folks, you might ask, what's bugging me today? Well, the answer is actually found in the question, which is to say, bugs are bugging me today. Oh, sure, we have to share the planet with insects and arachnids and so on, and they so completely outnumber us. They are supreme nuisances, of course, and yeah, I'm looking at you, mosquitoes and wasps and bed bugs. Yet, coexistence is one thing, but do we have to put the creepy crawlies on the dinner plate? Well, if you ask the likes of Klaus Schwab of the World Economic Forum, the answer would be yes, that we need to substitute steak and potatoes for crickets and mealworms. Oh, not that King Schwab will be chowing down on insects anytime soon, mind you. Much like he tells us, you know, to surrender our cars as he buggers off in his chauffeur-driven limo. What a fun burglar. Now, you may have heard that there is quite the Canadian angle when it comes to the topic of edible insects, namely a humongous cricket breeding facility operated by the Aspire Food Group recently opened in London, Ontario. Now, my initial calls and my emails went unreturned, so I hopped into the Menzoid mobile and buggered on down the 401 to try and get some answers. And here's what transpired. David Menzies for Rebel News here in London, Ontario. And folks, I am standing in front of the world's largest cricket farm. I kid you not. And uh, many of these crickets are destined for human consumption. And the question arises why I know that edible insect fans, and there are some people that fall into that category, uh, they talk about the millions and millions of people the world over that you eat insects as part of their daily diet. What they don't tell you is that most of those people are in third world nations and unfortunately they don't have access to other food. I don't think a grub worm is someone's first choice over a hamburger or a chicken souvlaki after all. Now the thing is, you gotta wonder, is Canada truly a nation that is desperate for insects on the menu? Um, but here's the thing, Aspire Food Group which is the name of the company here, folks, they're not really taking much of a risk in case this turns out to be a big flop. Uh, for example, Aspire's plant has received $16.8 million from Canadian taxpayers via something called Next Generation Marketing Canada. And it seems that this payment might just be the first installment, if you can believe it, also, Aspire has received an additional $10 million in taxpayer funds, funds from Sustainable Development Technology Canada. And get this, they've even received a million dollars from the United Nations. Now, we thought the idea of the world's largest cricket farm being located in Canada, well, that's kind of a, a big story, wouldn't you say? Um, especially with so many of the world's elites right now attacking farming, traditional farming that is, just look what's happening in the Netherlands, just look at that harebrained plan to label Canadian ground beef as bad for your health. And yet here we have this multi-million dollar insect farm uh, right in the uh, breadbasket of Ontario. It, it, it just seems weird. But we tried emailing, they don't return your emails. We tried phoning, unless you know the employee's extension number, and I took several guesses, uh, you cannot leave a voicemail. So why the lack of transparency? Now, I should point out our good friend at uh, Western Standard, uh, Karen Selleck, she recently panned a fine piece about this operation. And when she reached out to interview someone, well, at least she got a reply. It wasn't a good one. It said the following, quote, Hello, Karen. There is no one available to respond to your questions. Take care, Simone, end quote. I don't know who Simone is, but Aspire CEO, Mohammed Ashur, well, guess what, folks? He was more than happy to sit down with a CBC journalist. And if you check out that report, it comes across more like a press release rather than a actual news report. Uh, in any event, I'm here to get some answers. I think they owe us some answers. They're getting tens of millions of dollars of uh, taxpayer money. And because of that, they should be transparent in terms of where that money's going and whether or not 
this is going to be a viable operation. It Obviously, it's not viable enough for them to roll the dice and invest in this facility themselves. No, they're depending on you and I, just like the CBC depends on you and I. And in any event, let's uh, go in and uh, uh, see what's cooking, so to speak. Folks, just take a look at the size of this facility. You know, it reminds me of something from pop culture. Oh, I know, it's a Borg cube. You know, resistance is futile, self-determination is irrelevant, at least to what the world elites want you to put on your plate in the near future. Ugh. Sir, how you doing there? Not too bad. Good. I'm David Menzies with Rebel News, nice and to nice to meet you, sir. I'm in the middle of a meeting, and the oh. facility is close to visitors at the moment, but if oh. you'd like to schedule a meeting, uh, you can reach out to us, and, and we'll... Can oh, I, I have. I've nice reached out. Oh, one second. Oh. Up is Muhammad Ashur here? Because your phone doesn't pick up messages. How about we come back after your meeting? You'll have to schedule with me because we're starting the plan. We're not doing interviews for at least weeks. Oh, but you gave an interview to CBC, Muhammad Ashur. No. Well, um, we got the brush off, as you can see. He seemed friendly. He's in a meeting. I offered to come back uh, for the meeting. I, Toronto is uh, more than two hours away from here. They do not return their emails, folks, and they have a phone system where when you call, unless you know the extension, you cannot leave a message. It does not go to a, uh, a voicemail operation, and uh, you end up guessing at extension numbers. I'd have better luck uh, winning Lotto Max, I think. Well, folks, my camera woman, Sarah, and I, we had just finished wrapping up our report, such as it was. We got the bums rush, as you saw earlier. We walked around the facility. We were literally heading out to hit the road. And who should come out of the building but Mohammed Ashur himself? He is the founder and CEO of Aspire. And uh, Mr. Ashur graciously invited us in to have a sit-down interview and here's how that went. I'm just wondering, um, Mohammed, can you tell us why you think there is demand in Canada for cricket consumption? That's human consumption. Yes. Well, okay, so human consumption, I'm not so sure about that. Okay. Our primary market's actually pet food. Okay. So we don't really, when I first started the company, I was in medical school. I came across this business competition, the idea, this was at McGill University. The idea was to build a business that can address global food security. So we started traveling around different countries, looking at different foods people eat. We noticed that in a lot of the countries where people have experienced real hunger, places in Africa primarily, uh, insect consumption is actually prevalent. So our thought was maybe we can come up with a way to farm insects to address food security in these types of countries. Our thinking was never to try to get Canadians or Americans to eat, oh, to eat okay. bugs. Um, now, over time, we started to see that, you know what, there could be potential marketability of insects for human consumption, but that's obviously, it's tough. I mean, you think like 25 years ago, the idea of eating raw fish for most Canadians was crazy, and now sushi mm -hmm. is everywhere. So, yes, there's potential for insects to be a greater and greater percentage of our protein intake, but our focus is right now 100% pet food. Oh, okay then, so none of the crickets in this facility are right now destined for human consumption? In Canada, no. Oh, but outside of Canada? Uh, and right now we don't, have, we don't have any contracts right now with anybody who's buying crickets for human consumption out of this facility. What you just saw was an excerpt from my nightly show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every weekday, I do a monologue. Usually, it's about half an hour. Then I interview an interesting guest, and then we read my hate mail or my fan mail, whichever is more fun. It's only available behind a paywall, though. That's how we pay our bills here at Rebel News. We don't take a dime from Justin Trudeau. But the good news is it's only 8 bucks a month, about half the price of Netflix, and in addition to my weekly, sorry, my nightly show, you also get weekly shows from four other friends here at Rebel News. So you're getting 36 shows a month just for eight bucks. I think it's worth it. And even if you're not quite sure, do it anyways, because we rely on viewers like you to keep us free and independent. I promise you I'll never take a dime from Trudeau. Just go to rebelnewsplus.com and click subscribe. Thanks.